We tell the story a lot, but we literally charmed the pants off a cop during the shoot and the whole outfit. Um, we, we had a, we got, we got in trouble with this cop for doing burnouts in the parking lot. And then um, Lee just charmed him and he ended up giving us his clothes, the car, the entire precinct, what do you call it? Well, he's the security guard too that saved yeah. Sean at the end. He showed up to be in the movie, so um, yeah, you know. I don't Got know how char charming I am, but I was kind of desperate to, to get things I needed. Um, it wasn't my first lead role in an indie film. I'd done one other lead role before that in Australia in an indie film. Um, but I just fell completely in love with the character. Like, it, it, I, I don't really know. It, it, there was so much to the script. Like, I remember reading it and just realizing it was special. Like, to play a female lead in a film is something that's so cool and I just love. And there was so much depth to the whole film, as well as being funny and things. And I remember writing Lee an email after I did the, the sent in my audition tape and just told her how much I cared about the project. And I related to a lot of the issues, like even mental health, things like that. I just really, it just got me. You know, I'm, I'm not really um, that literary with film and there's, my whole childhood, I didn't really watch TV or movies, so I, I kind of spent a lot of time in my own head and just cooked up things, you know. But obviously, I love Wes Anderson. I don't know if you guys like Wes Anderson here, but um, I like stylized things like cauliflower shots and stuff. And and uh, and then you know, A Fish Called Wanda is my favorite movie <laughs> of all time. So um, you know, the corny kind of cornball jokes definitely come from like John Cleese and that kind of humor, so, so my, you know, my influences are music influences. Um, I'm a huge Led Zeppelin fan and, and um, classic rock girl, and then the beauty of growing up and living during the 80s was the confluence of heavy metal, new wave, you know, and, um, and classic rock, and I kept thinking, I was, I was feeling a bit self-conscious screening. It's the first time I've ever screened it in front of a UK audience, and you know, I borrowed so many of your bands for this movie, um, and I don't know if it's played out. I don't know if the music's played out for you guys, if, you know, it's been used a lot. Like, even the Foles song at the end, it's just, um, nobody in America really knows Foles the way you guys do, so uh, I'm a music junkie, so I think, you know, music probably influences me more than anything, and I make it a part of the directing process, working with the actors to just, like, pretty much each character has their own song, and um, sometimes I shoot them like a music video, yeah, and I don't, you, you I don't use it. She even like gave us music in advance to kind of listen to for particular scenes, which I find really helpful. Like I'm a big, I don't know, anything that helps sink into the world or the role. Uh, music is something that really affects me too, so that was really helpful. Continue. Yeah, so I, th I think that, you know, my, my, my fantasy oh, uh, project, would be to do like a Jimmy Page, Robert Plant biopic, like when they're young boys, when they meet for the first time and, and form Zeppelin, like that's my dream project. I'm just putting it out there uh, in the universe, you know? Hopefully I'll be back in Manchester with like, Jimmy Page is my producer and um, a girl can dream, can't she? You know, I have to say, I, it, and I don't want to be like one of those filmmakers that get mushy, but, um, this is probably our last festival, and you know I feel like go big or go home. So I, I like that we went big here at Manchester, and um, you know it's a weird time for indie films. Like I kind of feel uh, a little disheartened by the whole distribution thing. If it wasn't for festivals like this, really, who would see my movie? You know, the the doors aren't being knocked down. People aren't chomping at the bit to like do a theatrical run, you know. I'm sure it'll be on a streaming device near you in the summertime, but as a filmmaker, you wanna see it on the big screen. I mean, there's nothing better than this screen. This is just like, you can't top it. So, um, so I'm kind of shifting gears and, and I'm working, developing a, a TV project right now, which is in the vein of Game of Thrones, another period piece, but it's medieval France. Uh, and, um, you know, there's so many platforms for TV right now, and really, I just need a freaking paycheck. You know, like I just, I just need to get, you know, paid. Uh, you know, and I love TV. I just think it's an exciting time for TV. So I'm sure I'll find my way back to film, um, but it is hard to do 
make a movie for 10 years and then like, you know, it's just, a, it's not the, the breakout, like, but you know, I, who am I? I mean, even Hollywood movies aren't having any big releases, you know, they're, they're just keep kind of, I like the Transformers movies and stuff, like I like the big, you know, superhero mu movies, but I don't find there's a lot of room for the indie films, so, um, you know, I'll be back, but hopefully, hopefully I'll with a TV show and millions of dollars. <laughs> I just want to say thank you all so much for coming. You guys are the best. <laughs>